This show is brought to you by Millennium Tree Stands, Extreme Archery Products, and Ramcat Broadheads. Welcome to Reality Hunt Club. In this episode, we're going to be talking about our bow hunting, and also we're going to show you who showed up on the trail camera photos. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay guys, we've been up the past few weekends. We hadn't had much luck. Um, it's been hot. The bugs have been out, the gnats, the mosquitoes have been real bad. We've had, you know, the full, we're just coming off the full moon. There's a ton of acres on the ground this year. And, you know, the weather hasn't been great with the heat and all, but also the wind direction. Some of the best um, daytime photos we got of bucks and does just had the wrong wind and we just couldn't hunt it. You know, all, you know, I don't know what I'm not complaining because this is pretty much every bow season, especially in middle of Georgia when you're hunting September. Now, also another factor was is um we need to work on food plots and tower stands. You know, do I go hunt this afternoon or do I work on a tower stand and do I or do I plant my oats for the fall? So it's a toss-up, early season bow. Now it's getting cooler. Muzzleload season is coming up this weekend, but we're going to continue bow hunting. So we're going to go up. It's getting a lot cooler and the wind favorable. So hopefully we'll bring you guys some um, videos of us smacking some does and maybe a couple of these bucks. Now, I want to show you these. Um, I want to show you, uh, of course, I did have this encounter with a doe. And um, I, new camera. So I'm sitting in a stand and she comes out, as you can see, and all, you know, it's too dark for the GoPros and all that, but I'm sitting there, I'm seeing it through the LCD of this camera, but I'm not quite sure if it's good video light. And as you can see, the video light's marginal, but it's still better than average. So I decided not to shoot her and let her walk. Plus, you know, I want to make sure I get a good ethical kill and make sure I can center my peep. But that's the only real good chance. That's a big doe, 120, 125 pound doe. You know, one time she was at 15 yards. And I was like, oh, no problem. We'll, we'll get another chance. And we hunted hard a few more days and never did get another chance. So let's talk about let's talk about some bucks that's showing up on camera. Before I talk about bucks, let me show you these. Let me show you how feisty they're getting on camera. So let's look at this. So these photos. These photos are really showing that these bucks that were buddy buddy a few weeks ago are are not are starting to not get along. I got a lot of photos of bucks just posturing, the ears laid back, whether they're fighting over the corn pile, or some of them are even. I heard one guy down the road talking about a buck trailing a doe already. You know, the, some of those older bucks they're looking for those first doe. A Chuck on the club killed a um, a, a nice um, nine point opening day, which is like October twenty first. And that buck was chasing a doe as if it was November 7th, November 8th. So as you can see in these photos, these guys are not starting to, they're starting to not get along. And this is like one of the last photos of all of these bucks um, together. And then the next time you'd see that big six point by himself, or you see that, that companion nine point that we're calling him by himself, but you don't see him grouped up no more. Now get a load. Obviously these deer have been in the groceries. They look good, fat, and prime. But look at the necks. Look at the necks there. He, he, they are starting to swell up. I mean, look at that six point there. His neck's already full blown. So as you can see, they're just starting to spar a little bit. But you can tell they're starting to put that dominance on who's going to rule that ro roast. So interesting stuff. So let me move on. Let me get that down. All right, let me see. I'm going to talk to you about the new buck showing up. Okay, I'm going to go over this one first. This is called the tab 10 buck. Now, they cut those peanuts. This is on the far end of our club, and they cut those peanuts. So 
they've started um the deer since they started cut all the agriculture and collected them the deer are starting to move around plus the bucks are just moving in general because they've rubbed out in the testosterone now, this is a nice three and a half year old nice um he showed up I haven't had pictures of him and he he's he's staying at this spot of course they're all nocturnal so far but he's a nice he's a nice deer nice three and a half and as you can see in the photo nice body nice necks already starting to swell up he's gonna be a nice one so real proud of him let me show you this one this one we call the pond dam 10 or the pond dam buck excuse me but he is a 10 too all right um now how old y'all think this deer is He's actually six and a half. I'll show you in a minute why I'm saying six and a half. There he is in the background. Now, he's six and a half. We have trail camera photo evidence that he's six and a half. Now, when he was... I'll show you these in a minute. Let me keep going through. You know, he's a nice buck. There's that other three and a half year old. He's a really nice buck. He's pushing those bucks off that corn pile. You know, and he, he's keeping that... That six and a half is keeping that three and a half away from it. So, real interesting photos. Just amazing how you can see the dominance they come in about. Now, here's the picture. I posted this on Facebook. Now, we have pictures of them in 2009, 10, 11, and of course this year, 12. Now, here's this 2009 photo. Okay? Now, he's clearly, you know, he's clearly a, a three and a half. Look at the body on him, his neck, and the antlers. And we're like, oh, he's a three and a half. Most of our deer worry about putting on more weight than than antlers when they're three and a half so we're like oh we'll give him a pass he'll be better okay well that was 2009 okay now 2010 he started looking really good as a four and a half of course we never saw this deer in the daylight oh he's looking really good you know he's got some real good potential as a four and a half now last year was the drought and this is him this is the most he grew in 2011 this is a november picture he's run down a little bit because they've been chasing does a little bit it's right at the beginning of the rut now, got good broad times, but his main beams never. So this year, he's still, he's a lot better. I mean, he's probably 125, 130 inch deer, maybe 135, but he still didn't quite put it together. So here's the pictures of all, you know, all the years. You know, 2010, I think, probably was his best year of growth as a four and a half instead of a six and a half. Don't think he's going down. I mean, he has six and a half. I think he's just doesn't have the genetics you know some people are meant to be tall some people are meant to be short and i think he's just show he's just short of his genetics so anyway we call him the pond down 10 obviously six and a half year old deer i don't think i for a matter of fact nobody's ever killed a buck on the club six and a half years old so that right there him being mature and being trophy plus the fact 2009 10 11 you know we never seen this deer we never got a shot but i think he's going to be more dominant and we're going to get an opportunity to shoot him this year so anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Let me see what else we're going to talk about. All right. Now I want to show you this and we'll wrap this up. <clears throat> now, look at these two bucks here. Obviously, they have different genetics, right? Well, this is what we call our sway genetics. You saw my dad kill that deer last year. And this is the no brow junior genetics where they have you know this one's wide and good brow times and the other one is high and tight hardly any brow times if if any they normally grow them on the left side now what i so this is like their offspring now what's funny to me and chuck is <coughs> what's funny to us is these guys are running together like their grandpappies <laughs> Okay, this is Sway. Obviously, these are two these are two and a half year old deer right here. Now this is their granddaddy's Sway right here and No Brow Junior Third, whatever you want to say in the background. So what we find funny is I couldn't find a two and a half year old picture of them, but these deer are running together just like their relatives were running together. And, you know, I just I just think that's funny. I pulled some 2007 photos up the other day. And if you blotted out the 2007, <coughs> excuse me, you'd think it were 2012. It's just, ama it's just amazing to me. You get the same deer, the same antlers genetically every year after year after year. 
and it's just cool and this is a good picture um next year when these deer are three and a half i hope to have a picture if they're still hanging out which odds are they are i hope to have another picture just like this and ask you guys um are these the same you know are these the same deer and you're gonna say yes they are the same deer i'm gonna say no they're not that picture that picture was taken in 2010 and this picture was taken in 2013 they're different sets of deer same days so anyway, thought I'd bring this to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, stay tuned, and we'll be bringing more webisodes to you. So thanks for watching Reality Hunt Club. Hopefully we'll have some luck this weekend, and um, join us. You know, like us on Facebook. Leave us some comments. Tell me what you guys think, anything you want to see, and stay tuned. We'll bring you more webisodes as the season rolls on and starting to roll up, and the weather's getting good, and hopefully we can knock some deer down. So stay tuned. If you like this show, check out our other shows at Hunt365.tv.